Today we're testing a new lithium iron phosphate 12 volt 100 amp hour battery by Rebel Batteries. This battery came unexpectedly in my mailbox yesterday and I've never contacted this company before. But it came with a list of features and then I checked out their website. It was very professional. They also post their own teardowns of this battery on their YouTube. And the company is owned by disabled veterans here in the United States. And they even listed all of the parts inside. They are not scared to let me tear it apart. And that's pretty surprising, honestly. I deal with so many unprofessional lithium iron phosphate distributors. And man, this is pretty nice to see already. And it looks pretty nice. Like the case is nice as handles. And the sticker has a lot of information. We also have a QR code so you can find tutorials, tips, and more. So yeah, I really like what they're doing already. Like this looks very professional. So we're gonna do a capacity test and everything else that we typically do. So first we need to charge it up to 100% and the sticker on top states that we can charge it 100 amps and these are the same terminals as an SOK battery. There's also a switch right here but this is only for turning on the Bluetooth. Perfect. So now we're charging at exactly 100 amps. So we'll come back in less than an hour and it should be fully charged. Now I've connected the app to the battery and it says we're charging with 99 amps. We have 99 amps at the meter. This is a typical JBD interface, so we have the cell voltages down here. It shows how much power is going into the battery and how long it will take to reach full. The voltage differential, the remaining amp hours, and you can change the settings in here. Let's see what the low temp charging protection is set at. And the charging under temperature threshold is negative 2 degrees Celsius. I'm actually going to change that to zero. The discharge under temperature, it could actually be negative 15 or negative 20 degrees Celsius, but both figures are acceptable. They would protect the battery in most circumstances. And then I press the check on the top right so it will save the settings. Now we're charging with a higher voltage than what it's rated for. Oh, there we go, I just disconnected. So the high voltage disconnect does work and this battery is fully charged. Now the test has started and we're gonna run at a 0.2C rate, which is industry standard. So now we must wait five hours and then we'll have our test results. It is now done. Exactly 100.8 amp hours, really? That's actually surprising. Usually we pull three to 6% more than its rated capacity on the first few cycles. But technically it did pass by 0.8 of an amp hour. So, hmm. This looks a little similar to the SOK battery. They even have the support bar going across the cells. They have the same terminals and these covers right here. But this is a different BMS and look at these solder joints. On the BMS input and the BMS output, we have globs of solder. And technically they reach the proper temperature, but I just do not like the look of that and I personally hate solder. And you have to depend on someone's craftsmanship to ensure a solid connection. This one looks really nice and this will carry the current, but what if someone's having a bad day and they didn't do a good job? So personally, I do not like this. The switch for the BMS is glued into position. It's a little sloppy, but it will do the job. And I just noticed that this wire is damaged. I think it rubbed on the support bar inside the battery. Also, every wire has a protection sleeve and it is well organized. So this is the switch for the BMS and this is the Bluetooth module on top. I also noticed that this wire that supplies the Bluetooth module is pretty taut. Like it's very tight fit right here. Personally, I wish there was a little bit more slack. And I think I just found something. So the balance cable only has five wires and that's typical for a 4S lithium iron phosphate battery. But there is supposed to be low temp charging protection and that sensor should exist only on the cells. So typically we would have two more leads coming from the BMS, but I cannot seem to find them. If there is a low temp charging protection sensor on the BMS, that would not be good. And I think I just found it, look at this. Yeah, look at this. They just folded it up and glued it inside. Look at the excess lead length. This is supposed to be attached to the cells. Why is it attached up here? That doesn't make any sense. This is going to get warm when you charge and discharge. So it will give you an inaccurate reading of the cell's temperature. But it says that it does have low temp charging protection. So let's put this in some ice cold water and see if it actually works. So right now we're charging and we're going to dip this in some ice cold water. 
and it works, that's nice. JVD BMSs are good. The BMS that they have is a high quality BMS. And I've never seen one fail this test actually. But why in the world is it attached to the BMS? I hope they can change that soon. And it's not on the side with the FETs, but the thing is, is it's touching a heat sink. And if this gets warm, this is gonna get warm. So yeah, that's not a good idea. Oh, come on, is this one glued too? All right, I'm just gonna cut this thing out. So we're gonna do some battery surgery. You know what, this looks like a Chins battery. This is like halfway between a Chins battery and an SOK. It has like a little bit of both. Oh, look at that. And they don't want to come out either, jeez. I'm actually pretty sure that I have these cells over there on a the rack. So I would not consider this very serviceable like the SOK battery though. You can't just slide a cell in and out. Also, these cells are on their sides. Some cells can be on their sides, but you have to check the data sheet. Typically this configuration is okay, but it's better to have them facing upward for a prismatic. This is not the case with cylindricals. You can have them in any orientation. There is spacers between the cells though, and it is put together pretty nicely. The balance leads are connected to the bus bars with a small little screw. It looks really nice. And there's locking washers on the terminals. Guys, I cannot get this thing out and I do not want to damage it. Usually when this is a problem, I just cut the case, but this is a steel case. So it makes it very difficult. If I try to lever it out with a large screwdriver, I could damage them. All right, let's just try it a little tiny bit. It might be glued on the bottom. <laughs> Man, these will not budge at all. All right, I give up. I'm not going to do it. So overall, I do not like the temperature sensor placement, and I do not like seeing globs of solder. Most of the lithium iron phosphate batteries in this category have these bolted down with copper lugs that were terminated. I prefer that. So for the price, I would go with an SOK battery. The SOK battery is cheaper. It does not have Bluetooth. I really like what the company's doing and how they made it look and all the features that it has on paper, but it really needs to solve these very small issues and I think it would be a winner. So yeah, this was not my favorite battery as you guys can tell, but thank you so much for sending it out. Um, there will be a link below that's an affiliate link, but yeah, I'm pretty sure people will pick an SOK battery over this one. And that's pretty much it for this video. I hope they solve these problems and thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you later. Bye.